Hello, everyone. I bet you're wondering what's up with this funny getup. Well, I've got a hat, I've got a superhero t shirt, I've got a beard. I'm an atheist, I live in Maryland, and I have a YouTube channel. So I figured the force is too powerful. Ha! No choice must make Star Trek video. Which is why the first episode of The Sincerest Form of Flattery is rip off, actually. If I were going to do this without a script, I would be forced to call this not actually rip off, actually. But for legal reasons, I couldn't do that. One misplaced comma, and I'd be implying that this wasn't a ripoff of someone else's format, when it very clearly is. Today, I'm going to try to answer that age-old Star Trek question, Is Q God? I've seen many attempts to answer this question online, and in various essays. It really came down to there being five qualifications for God. The first being omnipotence, the second being omniscience, the third being omnipresence, the fourth being omnibenevolence, and, oh yeah, there can be only one. You know, God is like a highlighter. Q is not an omnipotent being, nor is he the only one of his kind. It's been shown that two or more Qs working together can override a singular Q. In fact, that's the basis for the episode Deja Q. Nor is Q omniscient. There are many episodes, including True Q, Q-less, and All Good Things, where Q exhibits actual surprise. You only have to watch any Q episode ever to know that he is not, by any means, omnibenevolent. Q is batting 3 for 5, or arguably 1 for 5. As far as I'm aware, Christianity is the only religion that claims God is omnibenevolent. If you read the Bible, it's hard to see that God of the Flood is omnibenevolent. Oh, sure, he was good to Noah. But what about everyone else? Depending on which version of the Noah story you read, God was either trying to wipe out the Nephilim, who were these sort of half-man, half-angel things, which have their parallels to a Q episode called True Q, or he was just trying to wipe out the sinners. In either case... God is omnipotent. He had so many other options. He could have just rewound time and made those things never happen. Or he could have just turned them into non sinful things with a snap of his fingers. But no, he chose genocide because nothing says I'm a great guy than killing off 99% of all life on the planet. Or what about Abraham and Isaac? God tells Abraham to kill his son. And he's actually going to do it until God says, Sorry, April Fool! Because there's no better way to tell your most beloved servant, I love you, than tricking him into killing his own child. Is the way God treated humanity in the flood that much different than how Q treated the Calamarine? Or when he introduced humanity to the Borg? These things don't seem like they'd be that out of character for God. Yeah, about that only one God thing. I hate to break it to you, but... There are many places in the Bible where other deities are referred to as being actual things. The first commandment doesn't mean that there aren't other gods. Yahweh is just saying, Hey, Ra, Zeus, Odin, Zenu, those guys are all around but they're complete and total. Yeah. Wouldn't it be better to have to only deal with one omnipotent bitch than an entire pantheon of warring squabbling bitch? So just do whatever the fuck I say, and I'll keep those other bitch off your back. Really, all that gets you is that Q isn't the Christian god. The god of the Old Testament is exactly like Q. He's incredibly powerful, he's capricious, he's untrustworthy, he's amoral. Oh yeah, and he's probably a psychopath. Significantly advanced technology, Science or evolution is indistinguishable from magic. An entity like Q is so far in advance of us that any distinction between it and God is purely academic. The human mind is incapable of comprehending the difference. 
But really, I don't think you can get you off the hook for being the god of the New Testament either. And it all goes back to that episode I mentioned earlier, Deja Q. Let's see, a cosmic being taking on human form to learn a lesson about morality? Seems a bit familiar, don't you think? And I know what you're going to think. All those examples I gave of the nasty god were Old Testament. Those don't count. Funny how that's always the Christian response when an atheist brings up how horrible God is. But when they want to use their religion to justify, say, limiting gay rights, they turn to Leviticus, which is about as Old Testament as you can get. So why does that count? The parallel between Q and Jesus couldn't be more clear. While Q doesn't die, he surprises Picard and Q's fellow members of the Continuum by being willing to do so which leads to Q being reinstated. And the experience has a profound effect on Q in every episode thereafter. The Q we meet in Encounter at Farpoint, Hide and Q, and Q Who are all about wrath and destruction. Whereas, after Deja Q, Q is less of a destroyer and more of a trickster. So, he either learned his lesson in morality, or at least realized that if you break all your toys, you have nothing left to play with. And after that, he never really wanted to harm Picard, Janeway, or Sisko. He just wanted to play. Okay, Sisko maybe. But he learned his lesson pretty quick. He didn't always come to play, either. In q and in All Good Things, Q felt some sort of moral obligation to help lesser beings. You know, like a good deity is supposed to do. Which is more than you can say for Yahweh most of the time. But, much like the biblical god, Q was just sort of a prick about it. The episode, The Q and the Grey, might be where the Q is God argument falls apart. Damn you, Voyager! A civil war breaks out in the continuum. Oh god, I just got that pun. Ugh. Anyway, Q asks for help from the one entity in the cosmos who might actually help him because she's sort of indirectly responsible. But if Q were God, an omnipotent being, you would have no need for help. If you can do anything, you have no real need for other people. A lot of the people who say that this destroys my argument are the same people who say that God needs as many people as possible on his side so that he has an army for the end times. Yeah, that makes total sense. An omnipotent being, who can do anything, needs an army. Uh-huh. I'd buy that for a dollar. Even if you ignore my entire religious argument, people will say, oh, Q can't be God, because Gene Roddenberry was an atheist, which is a bit of a myth. His family claims that he believed in some sort of higher power. He just didn't believe mankind had to act in deference toward it. He was more anti-religious than, than an atheist. He also believed that as vast as our universe must be, that God caring about one rinky-dink primitive-minded planet out in the boonies of the universe to be absolutely absurd. Maybe once we pulled ourselves out of savagery, he, she, it would care. But not now. If you look at God through the eyes of Jaden Roddenberry, Q being Yahweh makes perfect sense. What's the first thing Q does when he meets Picard and company? He puts the Enterprise crew, and by extension all of humanity, on trial to see if they deserve to be among the stars. But as I said, by the end of Deja Q, he finally sees humanity through the best of us. Which, ironically, Q sees as being Data, the only one who ever showed him any kindness whatsoever. And to prove that he learned a little bit about humanity, he showed some himself by allowing Data to experience joy, if ever so briefly. But he also claimed he wasn't going to turn Data human because he was afraid it would ruin him. Q still sees things about humanity that he doesn't like, but unlike the rest of the Continuum, he hasn't given up on us entirely. In fact, by the end of Deja Q, he no longer sees us as the infection that he did in the encounter at Farpoint. No, 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 now Q thinks of us more as children, or a puppy. 
That's funny because that's pretty much how Christians think God thinks about them. So, is Q God? I'd have to say for the Star Trek universe, yes. But if that's true, is the Great Gazoo the God of Bedrock? I don't know, who the hell do you think I am, Saber Spark? Q shows more of the qualifications to be God than any other entity we've seen in the Star Trek universe. More than V'ger, more than Verlaine, more than whatever that was at Shakari, even more than the Bajoran Prophets. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like or subscribe. I'll have my Patreon up soon. But until then, keep on trekking.